we were we were chatting briefly before we hit record about kind of the work life balance terminology and the way I was explaining is I don't necessarily see it as a work life balance because you never really hit balance. It's like a teeter totter. <laughs> so I like to look at it more like work life harmony. Once again, it is a well, gosh, it's a Monday in June. It's going to be pretty close to half a year's gone of 2023 and. I don't know about you, but it has went by so quick. Of course, you know, hey, I think that's a good thing. You know, I, I got to looking at it back over the last few months and gosh, I've been everywhere and done everything. And, you know, somebody said, hey, how do you get to be, be able to do that? I want your life. And I'm like, well, you know, you just got to create it for yourself. And I think that's part of it. So, folks, you know what? Today's topic is going to be a little bit different than the normal, uh, you know, all the business stuff because, I kind of want to talk to Mickey Anderson again. She's back on the air with us again. Uh, if I hit the right button, let me see if I can get her on here. It should work right. Ah. We had our connection problems. There's Mickey, right? There we are. Hello, hello. <laughs> so Mickey, hey, let, let's tell, you know, if people haven't joined us before, so like I said, we're halfway through the year almost. Uh, let's talk a little bit about who Mickey is, what she does, and then we'll get into what I want to talk about today. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Mickey Anderson. I'm up north in Canada, up in Ottawa, and I run a con content marketing business. So I help you create the marketing things that are going to actually grow your business so you can stop working so hard <laughs> and start profiting well, you, more. <laughs> you know, Mickey, and that, that's kind of the topic I kind of wanted yeah. to, to kind of get into today because, you know, uh, here, here it is on Monday morning as we're taping this. And, you know, what's that one thing that a colleague says when you first walk in was, how was your weekend? <laughs> Do I really want to tell them everything about my personal weekend is the first thing that goes to my mind, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough. I think we want to keep some things to ourselves. We want to share some things. We don't want to seem rude either, right? I'm Canadian, so we're the oh, yeah. ultimate people pleasers. We love to do whatever will make everyone happy. And usually right. that's that's sharing whatever you ask. But it's okay to not share everything. It's okay to have your space. Um, but it's also okay if you want to share, you can. Well, you know, I, I think as this question was posed to me this morning, I thought about, I thought, you know, I have for probably the better part of 40 years had um, what I guess everybody has talked about is work-life balance. And I did, that's mm -hmm. kind of what everybody says, but, you know, adjusting life and work and, and, and just getting into a routine and that routine changes as things go, as we all know, um, your program, you talk about not working so hard and I've, I'll get into a bunch of that, but, you know, how much work, how much life? And isn't work life? You know, it's tough. I think, yeah, in order to grow a business and be successful, yeah, you have to be able to work hard. But I think one of the biggest challenges is what do I work hard on? What's mm. worthy of my hard work? Um, and at what point is it no longer actually helping? Is it hindering? And so you have to have some level of self-awareness there as you're working in your business, right? Am I working hard on the right things? Am I working hard in a sustainable way? Am I giving myself the opportunity to recharge? Uh, and there, there are seasons, you know, we were, we were chatting briefly before we hit record about kind of the work-life balance terminology. And the way I was explaining is I don't necessarily see it as a work-life balance because you never really hit balance. It's like a teeter totter. <laughs> so I like to look at it more like work life harmony, where you're going to ride the waves and there's going to be seasons and ups and downs, but it's all about the long term. How can I make this sustainable for the long term? And that means sometimes there's going to be more work than play and sometimes there's going to be more play than work, but it's being able to move through and adapt. That's really what's going to allow you that kind of longevity uh, and to keep your sanity along the way. Oh yeah, there's there's that word. Keep that sanity, right? <laughs> yeah. If you're an entrepreneur, you wonder where your sanity is. <laughs> That's true. We often forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I really actually have it as an entrepreneur? You know, uh, what is sanity? We left that long time ago. Some would say. Yeah. But, well, you know, we have I, a bias I, towards action, and we are typically hmm. not risk averse. We we typically take bigger risks. And we typically take action faster and sooner than others do. So uh, I have a friend 
Kevin Keppel, who says, we like to build the plane on the way down off the cliff. And I think that very much so describes entrepreneurship for most of us. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're building as you're going up, you're in trouble. <laughs> I, I think this is a conversation that, you know, I, 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 um, a lot of people, whenever they're marketing their business and they're putting their business together and going through all the struggles of what do I do, when do I do it, all this, you've talked about it several times uh, on other podcasts that we've had, um, but it's scheduling. And I think that's that harmony is learning how to put together a schedule that works for you at the different times, of, as you said, the seasons. Yep, absolutely. I think the more proactive you can be around your schedule, the more successful you're you're going to be. And you have to know what works best for you. So for me, for example, I have a really hard time jumping from task to task. I have a really hard time jumping from project to project. And as a marketer, that's the life usually. It's like we have lots of ongoing projects and uh, reoccurring deadlines and all sorts of things going at once. So in that atmosphere, it can be really hard to stay focused and to not get caught up and feel overwhelmed, right? Hit that burnout. And so what I've done is I've really been proactive about time blocking my schedule. So instead of, you know, jumping through the hoops and playing right. ball the way that the marketing world does, I will block a day for a specific project. I'll block a few hours for specific tasks. And I do that proactively to make sure that I don't get to a point in my schedule where all of a sudden I look and I go, I have no time. <laughs> so I'm very protective and very proactive of my schedule. So you, you do have to really take ownership of that. Your schedule doesn't happen to you. You create it, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I found that too, Mickey. I'm, I'm working right now. Um, one of the things, we've got a lot of online courses. And some of the feedback, as you had mentioned earlier, is get feedback and then put it through the mill and everything. But one of the reoccurring feedbacks is that, they don't want to read everything. Mm -hmm. Where's the audio? And translating, even using AI, still translating text to audio is really hard to do. Um, so, you know, it's like I've got to block time and I found I just block an hour every morning and then I go do something else and, and I don't get so burdened down with that task. Yeah, I like to stack my days too. whatever the highest priority, most important, or maybe like the thing I don't want to do the most <laughs> that gets stacked at the very beginning of the day to make sure that I don't miss it. I don't skip it and I get something done before the rest of the day tacks on. So, you know, it's kind of the mentality that they, they'll talk about in the military is making your bed every day. You know, you've accomplished one thing right at the beginning of your day. And even if you have a terrible day, you come home to a made bed. And that's kind of the way that I look at my schedule is I want to start with the most important, most vital thing that I can check off my list and feel good about. So the rest of the day, no matter what happens, I've done that one most important thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and that changes, but there's some things that need to, I mean, it's going to take me a long time at an hour every day to get through all of the courses and get all of the audio up there. But it's not the primary thing, but it's just another one of those things, as you said, in that, that, that you know, working with what am I doing, putting work and life together, um, not letting it consume my whole time. But then right after I got through with that, I went and walked for 20 minutes. Yeah. And I think too, at a point, right, we have to recognize that sometimes it's better for someone else to do things. Sometimes your time is more valuable than the task. So if you're spending your time, so say for example, the highest value task you do is valued at like $100 an hour. Um, and you're spending eight of your hours doing $10 an hour tasks. Is that really the best way to set yourself up? So I like to look at it kind of in, in two lenses. One is I'm gonna prioritize revenue driven tasks first. So what's gonna make me money, put money in my bank? I'm gonna prioritize that over everything. And then secondary is what are the things that I can, only I can do, I do them best. I am the one person who can do them. And then everything else, how can I automate or delegate it? And sometimes it's worth it to pay a VA or to hire a contractor or a student intern to come in and tackle a simple task like that so that you can actually focus on the revenue driving. And that's a big shift that takes someone from thinking about, 
you know, I want to build a hundred thousand dollar business to no, no, I want to build a million dollar business. That's a big mindset shift. And it's the, the book that I love that really just kind of encompasses this whole um, aspect is, is by Dan Sullivan. It's called who not how, and it's that question of, it's not, how will I do this? It's who will do this for me. And once you start thinking about things in that way, it completely shifts the way you look at your schedule and your day-to-day as well. Yeah, no, and I think as you talked about that, I'm thinking, you know, as I'm going through here, um, taking this text and putting it into audio, when I listen to the audio, I go, no, wait a minute, that's not what I wanted it to say. I'm the only one that can do that because I build the courses now, yep. other stuff can happen, but, you know, what it's doing is it's creating another thing of I'm now editing and updating, and only I can do that. But it still is revenue-driven because that's what keeps people taking the online courses. This is what they're looking for. There you but go, then you know that's your, your point, But yet, to your point, I've used AI to help me find out and to work with this because now I'm going, okay, so now if I'm going to do that, Maybe I need to rewrite this just a little bit before I actually publish it again. Yeah. Yeah. And and sometimes people and the one of the and this is kind of a good example because I think that is absolutely a task of yours. Like that makes perfect sense why you're the person to do it. You're the you're the one crafting, you're the thinker, you're you're the tinker, that you're the one going in and making the course and craft it. So it makes perfect sense that you're the one to do that. And it's amazing that you're using AI to help you there. One of the situations that I see often is, well, it would take me 10 hours to train someone to do this thing for me. I'm just going to do it for myself. And yes, although there is an upfront cost of time, energy, and money to get someone to a place where they can tackle those tasks, a lot of times yeah. it's worth it in the long run, especially if that's something oh, yeah. that continues to come up month over month. And so you can really do a time audit or a calendar audit and look through. And I actually, I did this for three months as a, um, a test oh, really? or a challenge to myself. So every thing in my schedule, Every event, every task, every item, I put a dollar value beside it. Really, oh. really fun oh, and exciting oh. to do. So you go through and you look at your calendar and for every event or task, you put the dollar value and you will very quickly start to notice the massive gaps in revenue or in value of those tasks. And after three months of doing it, I have never been more motivated to hire someone. I brought on a student intern who worked for free, who came in for three months to work for free and tackled some of those projects for me. It was one of the greatest things ever. And I have never looked at my calendar the same. And so that can be a really powerful task for anyone in the cleaning industry, whether you're working in management on the floor, whatever you're doing, put the value the dollar value in those events on your calendar, and you will very quickly start to prioritize things differently. You know, that goes, and you know, um, I've been in, in the sales business for a lot of years. And uh, one of the things that got me, and to your point, was whenever we go out and demonstrate a piece of equipment or process or something like this, there's a real hard cost to that. Well, somebody says, oh, well, that's money you paid out. Well, no, it's not actually money I paid out. What I consider that a hard cost is my investment of time and what was I not doing? And we, we come up with, uh, for one of the things that we use in the cleaning industry is an auto scrubber. Uh, you know, a, you know, it can be a thousand pound machine, takes a trailer, you've got to get it, you have to inventory it. It's a, a $6,000 investment to inventory. You got a warehouse, all of these things. But then what it came down to is to go and demonstrate an auto scrubber cost me $690. And then you go, well, now if I didn't bid that machine and make enough profit to cover that, what was the true return on that investment of time, money, and effort? And I think this is what you're getting to. Yeah. If you don't put that down, you don't know. And yeah, it's so true. I love um, time tracking. That's one of the things I got away from it for a long time, but I've become reignited into my love of, of tracking time um, and tracking costs. And so that way I can really look at a task and think, okay, what is the actual cost in time and money combined? <laughs> and then am I, as I'm doing this task, am I able to, to make back that money? Like, is there a profit margin? What's going on here? And it really makes you look at things differently 
for sure. And that that is the mentality shift from building a small business to like a, a medium large enterprise. And I'm uh, kind of guessing that you have quite a bit of experience with that mind shift with who the clientele that you continue to talk to, uh, to us about. Yeah, you know, the small business owners um, think it in expenses, typically, and it's usually like, I bought this thing, I paid for this thing, and the time expense is usually not considered unless it's someone else that they're paying for their time, but their own time, they don't add that into account and value their time in the same way. And so that mindset shift is vital because otherwise you will remain small. You can have the biggest goals in the world, but you're not going to be able to shift and scale if you don't start to consider your time and you look across the board at all of the pieces on the board, including you. And once you see that, it changes things. I think that's interesting because we had a job bidding class here a couple of weeks ago. And in, in did doing that, I have a, a, a spreadsheet, you know, that gets rather lengthy. And by, you know, as we got through it, they were like, golly, come on. I just want a number. I just want that in number. Go, you've got to know these numbers to get to that in number. Yeah. And, and I said, you can't put these in a different column. They have to go in order or it throws a whole formula off. And one of those things, Mickey, was, you know, because we in the janitorial industry work with a lot of small businesses, mm -hmm. um, uh, revenue less than 250 grand a year. Yeah. And they're usually working for themselves or maybe have one person or something. But I said, here's the thing. If you aspire to be more than that, if you don't bid the jobs and start looking that way and they were like, well, yeah, someday. I'm like, but the thing is, are you paying yourself? Mm -hmm. And the one that most people forget is someday when you have a supervisor, you got to pay them too. Yep. Yeah. It's, and you know, if you are even considering bringing someone on the next year, two years, like it's in your radar that, okay, I'm eventually going to need to bring a supervisor or an additional staff member. As you're doing your books every month, calculate out the cost of what that would be. Mm -hmm. And you can start to save and build up and recognize, okay, here's how much more revenue I need to be making now in order to build that buffer. Because you do want to have a buffer of revenue when you bring someone new on. Otherwise, it's going to be someday forever. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we do with that bidding class is we start the whole thing. And one of the, the marketing things that you, you know, I, I keep telling, every, every time I do another marketing thing, I think, oh, Mickey would love this. <laughs> Yeah, I should. I, you know, if I sent you something every time, your inbox would be full. Um, I love it. But you know, the thing is, is I started looking at what's that graphic that I wanted to to put out there for the job bidding class, and what I did is I put a, a picture of sand, a beach with footprints in it, and I said, mm -hmm. if you're an entrepreneur, where do you want to put your footprints? Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Because, you know, that's the difference. If you don't know those numbers, if you're not working your schedule. But I think this goes back to what we started this morning talking about, Mickey, is if I don't know what I want to achieve out of life, work will not do that for me. And it is that fluctuation between the two. And I think knowing, do I want a job or do I want a business or, mm -hmm. or is something that we need to know? Because a lot of times we think we want a business, but we really want is a job. <laughs> And sometimes we think we want a job, but what we really want is a business. And being able to identify where you stand can help you set expectations and find the right people to fill the gaps too, right? Because not everyone wants a business. Some people just are really passionate about the way things are done and they want to get in and do the thing. That doesn't mean you can't bring someone on to help you. It just means that you're going to be in a different role and have different responsibilities. And that's on you to find the other people who are going to help you fill the gap. And an entrepreneur realizes that they are not the best at everything. Oh, you're usually the worst at 90%, but that 10% you've got. <laughs> so it's accumulating people who can come in and, and there's a, like, I can't remember the book, but it's, you have, your business is the bus and you've got seats, a bunch of different seats. But if you put the wrong person in the wrong seat, that's a problem, but you can take the right person and move them to the best seats. Oh, yeah. right? But it's all about the people, not the positions. So if you can find the right people, you can create positions 
where they'll thrive and help you grow your business. It's looking for those intrapreneurs, the people who will come in into your business and help you grow your business from the inside, as opposed to the entrepreneurs. So you do want to have a balance of people who are good tacticians who'll go in and do the thing, as well as some people who are going to come in and help you see things bigger and push you. You know, there's nothing like somebody pushing you. Mm. But it's got to be the right person with the right insight. Uh, I think we get um, pulled and pushed in different directions needlessly because people don't have uh, don't understand our focus. And that goes back to are we marketing right focus? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the filter I like to use is um, if I'm looking at someone and they're giving me advice, it's if, have they done it before and achieved success? <laughs> right like if not then that, that, that might be a good that might be right? a good start mickey <laughs> but we get a lot of people who love to give advice in areas where they're not experts but they see things differently and i think it's important to to put it through the filter of like okay i understand that sounds like a great idea but i'm also noting that you've never done this or had success with it <laughs> so maybe i okay. need to get some additional opinions in here <laughs> yeah, right, right. I mean, you know, there, there, there are those people. We know who they are. <laughs> We've all got them. Sometimes it's a spouse okay. in the business. <laughs> I'm not going to go for that one. No, Mickey, I'm not. No, you're not going to get me into that one. Not today. No. Nope. Okay, so what, what, what's the next one? Let, let's go on to the next one, I think. <laughs> yeah, so if they haven't done it and achieve success, it's, or have they done it and achieve success in a different area? So maybe they haven't done it in the cleaning industry. Maybe they haven't grown a business in the cleaning industry, but they've grown a business and seen success there, right? Is there overlap? Cool. I'm going to see that. But if they're out of left field, it's like, thank you for your opinion. That's an opinion, not advice. I'm going to move on. That's it. But when it comes to building your business and growing your business and, and finding that, you know, harmony, as we talked about the work-life harmony, it's easy to see the future as always being the future, right? But I think, and what I mean by that is, is your goals, the work-life balance, oh, I'll have balance next month, right? Oh, I'll take time off in a few months. Oh, vacation's coming in, in the summer. I'll, I'll hustle till then. But there are things you can do today to set yourself up so you're not just clinging on to the next vacation because that's a really, really tough life to lead is constantly looking to the next break. Instead of how can I create micro breaks now that are going to allow me to feel better along the way. And I think you do a good job of this. It's, it's looking at your, your schedule and seeing, okay, I'm going to take that walk because I know that task is daunting and it makes my brain hurt. <laughs> so I'm going to take that walk after I do the audio. I'm going to build these pieces in so that I show up better. Not all time has to be focused work time. We do need time to let your brain breathe and break and stop in order to yep. come back more focused and be more productive. And, and, you're, and what you're talking about is I've, I've found that my creative juices flow better in that 4.30 to 8 o'clock hour in the morning. Yeah. But even at that, after about an hour and a half of it, I need to go get that walk. Now, the walk is important to me physically, yep. uh, you know, because of the heart surgery and everything. So uh, there's a real good, and you go, there's value to that for me personally, not just, you know, what most people say, oh, it's a walk. For somebody that's been through heart surgery, we totally understand that walking and, and everything is, is very important. So when you talk about this harmony, I did the business. I did what is important. That, that was my creative time. Uh, I did what's valuable to me as a pure person and my physical. But that also gave my brain time to relax. So when I go back, I go, aha. And when I was walking, I was thinking about, okay, so I need to now. Nah, and that's that next creative part. But creative just, is, just can't flow through me during the day because there's too many other things. Yeah, it's like your car. You got to gas up regularly. You can't go on a two day trip and expect that one stop at the gas station is going to take you all the way. Like, sorry. Occasionally you have to clean the windshield and put some gas in. You are the same, right? Your brain is the same. They, they call it white space. It's, it's time when you're not actively thinking, when you're doing other things like walking. That's really important. And it actually makes you better at problem solving and thinking. So you, as much as it might feel like I need to be productive 100% of the time, I think that's, again, that's one of those mindset shifts that takes you from small business to big business is like, no, I don't. I don't need to be productive 100% of the time. When I am productive, that time counts. 
and I'm going to be working on the highest value things and I'm going to have the right people in the right places to make up the rest of the time. But that those pieces are highly important, highly important. So as we talk about this, Mickey, it, it, you know, I work with a lot of different people from all over the world. Um, and I find that a tremendous amount of people don't have this harmony because they wait till the last minute to do something. And, you know, I've got a, a big deal. We've got about 300 custodians to run through uh, classes tomorrow. Uh, we've got probably about a dozen different people involved working in different rooms with different, a, a different uh, um, uh, computers and stuff that we've got set up. But all the prezies and everything was done a week and a half ago. I'm relaxed. I'm comfortable. I'm ready to go. That's not the normal way we work with people, is it? That's not what no. we normally find. No, entrepreneurs in general, this is a generalization, but most entrepreneurs are like high procrastinators. And the reason is because entrepreneurs are typically driven by the big rush, the excitement, the risk, right? That's just a natural kind of path that we take is, oh, this looks like it could be exciting. It's an adventure. <laughs> I feel it. And so if we don't feel that in something, we're going to wait until we get that feeling to do it. And that usually means pushing things off until the last minute. But what that does, as much as it might feel like, and a lot of entrepreneurs will say like, but I'm better when I'm under the clock or under the gun. Like I, I do better work. That's not actually true. That's true. Right. Yeah. We create the clocks. And I think, the more space you give yourself, the better prepared you're going to be. And I think it's also an opportunity to templatize things. Like a lot of times we wait till the last minute and we, we take away the opportunity to make life easier the next time I have to do it. Had I done this earlier, I could have prepped for the next one, set it up as a template, written a checklist as I go through it. So that way I can pass this task off to someone else or I can get part of it finished by someone else or the next time I do it I don't have to start from scratch but no we wait till the last minute <laughs> we do the same thing with hiring we wait till like I needed someone yesterday so I'm going to hire rapidly instead of projecting out okay three months from now it's the busy season we're likely going to need to hire let's start prepping and preparing in advance not many people do that but the most successful businesses do so again it's that proactively looking at your calendar looking at your business looking at your seasons and flows and really setting yourself up for success and setting those hard time blocks to get stuff done instead of waiting until the last minute now folks i don't know if you've noticed this or not but we're we're, we're now close to a half an hour into this conversation this morning with mickey but you know there's one word i've picked up that mickey's using quite often i don't even know if she realizes it or not but it's the word proactive Mm -hmm. In order to get harmony, you have to be proactive. And what you just got through talking about is being reactionary to the time crunch. But if we're proactive and do this ahead, do we usually find out that that task then has more value than it would have had? Because if, if we're only running from task to task, we never realize the full value, do we? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, um, I know that proactive was one of your like key value statements too. And I, I love that. I think it's it's so important. But when we think about being proactive, say for example, with hiring, like one of the big challenges or reasons why businesses stay small is because they hire reactively. They don't get to train their people well enough, which causes churn and turnover, right? So they're they're quickly, rapidly just trying to fill a spot instead of giving themselves time to find the right person. But the other piece is there's fear. If I hire too soon and I can't sustain that person, oh no, I'm not going to grow. That mindset is going to keep you as a small business. You have to be willing to set yourself up for your future success and not wait for it to hit you in the face and then react to it. You create your success. So as you're thinking, I'm going to need this person for the busy season, how am I going to make sure that I'm prepared? Oh, I'm going to start saving so that I have a few months of pay saved up and ready for that person when they come on. So even if the busy season isn't as busy, I'm prepared. It's those sorts of things that take you from that $250,000 business to the million and five million rent mark. I, th I think that's the thing is, is, you know, all of these things we've talked about this morning, Mickey, you know, it's it hard for somebody on a Monday morning, I'm sure, because they're not listening to us right now. They're, they're, they're running from one of those tasks to the next one. The weekend is, you know, in the cleaning industry, oh gosh, it's a Monday morning. What didn't get done over the weekend? What, what do we have? How many customers do we have to satisfy this morning? 
how many new hires didn't make it. And, you know, these are always, you know, as long as I've been doing this, those are always the Monday morning challenges for a cleaning business. Mm. They will always be there no matter what. Yep. And if you don't take your time and you don't proactively schedule this stuff, like you said, there is no harmony at all. It's just one crisis after the next. Why do people hate Monday mornings so much? Well, great Monday mornings that? start Friday night. And I think that's something we skip. We, we check out on Fridays. But Fridays is usually our opportunity to set ourselves up for a great Monday morning. And, and that's the way that I like to look at the week. A, a, a great Monday or a great week starts the week before. And if I haven't dedicated time to looking at the week before the next week to, to really understand what's going on and where I need to be, I'm going to show up and be reactive the whole week through. So I think the first step to a great Monday morning is dedicating an hour on Fridays to looking at your week ahead, preparing things, getting organized. So when you show up on Monday, you know where you need to be and what you got to do. So that's how you harmonize your next week. That's it. That's it. It's just so a quote, a, a a quote from Mickey. A, a quote from Mickey, I might say, harmonize your week, your week by starting right on Friday. Yeah. Or no, no, no. Harmonize your next week by ending Friday right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The And it, that's every great morning starts the night before, right? You'll hear that, you know, um, oh, if yeah. you're trying to set yourself up for success, say you've got like some exercise goals, you want to fit in a workout before you start work because it makes you feel better, but you're having trouble in the morning getting it together and feeling motivated. Well, you set that up the night before, you put your shoes out, you get your clothes ready so that it's easy. And we can do that in so many different areas of our life. I think we just forget. And so what I like to do is have, I have three checkpoints every week, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are my, my checkpoint areas where I have an hour blocked off on Monday, Wednesday, Friday to literally just, it's just schedule. That's it. I'm looking at my schedule, looking for tweaks, prepping things in advance. It's just honing in and future planning so that I don't find myself scrambling. And sometimes they need more. Sometimes it's, it's a five minute task, but I don't ever cut the hour. It might only take me five minutes to go through my schedule and adjust things and move things around. But then I have 45 minutes to go for a walk or grab some food or take a break. And I fully, fully take that hour regardless. And I, I encourage you to do the same. Don't fill yourself with busy work just, just because there's time in your schedule. What are the priorities? Write them out the night before, tomorrow. These are the three things that I'm going to be working on tomorrow or the two things or the one thing. And once that's done, give yourself space. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I learned as a salesperson. Um, and, you know, salespeople, by and large, especially if you're commission-based, you're an entrepreneur. Uh, you yep. just It's just not the, the moniker they put on you, but you basically are. Yep. And that was the thing that I learned, is you had to schedule every call. doesn't matter what it was. doesn't matter who it was, whether it was a 15-minute call or it was a two-hour visit to a client. It didn't matter. You schedule that. That's the... That's how you get this harmony that you look at. Uh, I love the word harmony. I had not used that before. I'm going to try to remember that. But folks, if you've been watching or listening to the podcast, uh, Mickey Anderson's address is scrolling across the bottom if you're watching the video. Now, the reason I tell you this is because if you don't know me by now, I'm kind of a strange, odd person in a way. I go to the bottom of people's websites and I go, what's down there at the bottom that nobody else is seeing? Because usually there's a tidbit of value. Now, if you go to the bottom of Mickey's website, what will they find? And I'll tell you about what I do with it, Mickey, but what would they find? Yeah, they're gonna find a freebie that they can snag with AI prompts. So if you're struggling to create social media content or content for your business to market it, AI can help, but it's knowing how to tell the AI what to do. <laughs> because if you don't know that, you're not going to get what you want. It's a lot like hiring someone new. If you don't tell them exactly what you want, there's room for error. And the same thing is with AI. So I've given you 21 prompts that you can customize to your business and needs, but that are going to help you improve the AI output. So what you get, you can use faster and it just needs minor tweaks. So what did I do? I went to the bottom of Mickey's site, got the 21 prompts. And over the last month, I've been working with a few of those, Mickey. I'm a what if person. I mm. like what ifs. So I had already developed a, a little um, a Canva um, 
what we a, a picture yep. with AI and what if. And when I saw that down there, I go, aha, Mickey's got a couple of what ifs here. So I went into AI and put in some of your little tricks and everything. I got back a whole bunch of things. You know what? I've now got 10 new posts that's already into the calendar for the month of June on what if. Folks, what I'm telling you is if you just simply go to our websites, there's a lot of information. Don't just look at the top stuff at the top. Scroll down. You know, one of the things that I was looking, it's been years ago, and gentlemen said, don't look at the literal picture. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put in safe, don't look at the first one. Go to the very end and work backwards. And what makes you go, ah, I think this is marketing, right? Yep. Yeah, it is. We reverse engineer everything. We start with the end in mind, so the sale, and then work our way backwards. And you can do the same thing with your business. A lot of times we we start with now and think, okay, the next step and the next step and the next step. Instead of starting where we want to be and reverse engineering, which is going to help us understand what's required, and it's just going to help you make better decisions. So I always recommend starting at the end and then working your way back, especially if you're looking to gain insight. So as you're reviewing websites or social media content, if you're looking at another competitor's social media, scroll all the way to the, the beginning of their social media feed and see how they've evolved and what they learned and what they've tried. And you're going to gain a lot more than scrolling from now back. Oh, Mickey, don't tell people to go back and look at my podcast from seven years ago. Please don't do that, folks. They'll oh, learn my from gosh. you. They'll learn from you. Oh, I look at some of that, Mickey, and I go, oh, my gosh, I put that out. I actually st st started talking about taking some of it off and go, no, 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 don't take it down. I'm like, oh, gosh. But you're right. We do grow if we are lurking to to get this balance and this harmony that you've talked about. I appreciate conversations with you. I, I, I come away with every one of them with something different. Me too, me too. I think it's, uh, it's nice to get out of your own head sometimes. I think a lot of us are feeling isolated. Um, you know, COVID did a, 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 a real, a, a real thing to us, each of us. And I think uh, as we reconnect and, and get out of our own heads and start to just talk more about things like this, the better we're all going to be. And I think recognizing too, that like even the big brands, right? Even Dave, <laughs> all of us, we, we all started somewhere. And it's, it's all about just make, moving forward and continue, like, don't be ashamed of being a beginner or not being good at something, <laughs> right? Like, that's just the way we all start a beginner somehow and we work our way through. And so don't compare your year one to someone else's year 10. It's kind of the mindset. Well, Mickey, you know, I tell you what, um, you know, sometimes people go, well, why do you want to have a monthly podcast? Uh, you know, there's just so much you can do. And it's hard to put a dollar value on podcast. It really is because it's kind of like advertising billboard going down the highway. You know, you don't know how many people looked at it, you know, but <clears throat> I can tell you growth. Definitely. If you go back and look at any of those, I can tell you, Oh my gosh, what the growth has been. Um, and that's just made everything much more professional, but keeping up with technology has been one big struggle. I think it is for all of us. I mean, I don't know about you, but I had to switch to my pilot's headset and microphone. We've had technical issues a lot, so you're not alone. Like we're all trying to keep up and figure it out as we go. And so I think like the thing that I credit you big time compared to most entrepreneurs is you just keep trying. You keep doing the podcast, you keep showing up, you keep posting the shorts and doing the thing. And the, that's the only way you're going to learn and get better. But a lot of people think, no, I'm not going to do it until I'm good. And it's like, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it, it is. It's, you know, uh, somebody said, well, you've got a YouTube channel, you know, a few videos. I said, yeah, I'm only at 550 right now. <laughs> just like, a few. When, when, when are you going to stop and go, uh, not as long as I'm doing this job because, uh, you know, now I'm getting better at it. It's getting easier. They're getting more fluid and they're having more impact. And I think that's the whole thing for somebody in, you know, the cleaning industry, as long as I have, I physically can't do the work anymore. So what I can do is I can try to help as many people as I possibly can. And this is the way I can do it. I so appreciate our time together and being able to talk. So folks, if you're listening to the podcast, 
please go to MickeyAnderson.com. I think you're going to find a lot of information. And like I said, scroll to the bottom. Look for the free stuff down there because uh, it'll help you. And then you'll understand more. Not everything is free. We know that. But hey, you got to start There's a lot of free so. there. Yeah, there's a lot of free on there, though. It'll get you going. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, we sure all have give this a big thumbs up and comment like what was your biggest takeaway from this episode for us as hosts being here to serve you like it's really helpful for us to for us to know what your key takeaway is what helped you what made the most sense what aha moments you had so share comment you know engage with us we love it everybody hey you know what uh, mickey said earlier i've got my three words i like it's healthy positive and proactive those are the words that drive me every day drive what we do here at the Academy. Thank you for spending uh, some time with us here at Beyond Clean with Ace. Please visit Mickey Anderson's website. Um, if you're in the business, you know what, even if it's just personal, there's a lot of stuff in there that's just helpful. Uh, by the way, Mickey does like red wine ladies, so you, know, you <laughs> might find that helpful too. Uh, but you know, hey, anyway, um, no matter what you're doing, where you're at, make sure that whatever you do from now till next month when we talk with Mickey again, make sure it's healthy, positive, and proactive. See you all later.